This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices were little changed on Thursday as uncertainty over whether the United States will avoid a debt default weighed against the prospect of further OPEC plus production cuts. Brent crude futures dipped 14 cents, or 0.2 percent, to $78.22 a barrel by 0635 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude, WTI, edged lower 25 cents, or 0.3 percent, to $74.09. Some progress had been made but several issues remained unresolved in U.S. debt ceiling negotiations, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said Thursday, as the deadline ticked closer to raise the federal government's $31.4 trillion borrowing limit or risk default. U.S. crude oil and distillate inventories fell unexpectedly last week as imports declined, while gasoline stockpiles dropped more than forecast, the Energy Information Administration said on Wednesday. Crude inventories fell by 12.5 million barrels in the week to May 19 to 455.2 million barrels ahead of the driving intensive Memorial Day weekend holiday, compared with analysts' expectations in a Reuters poll for an 800,000 barrel rise. Net U.S. crude imports fell by 1.25 million barrels of oil per day, the EIA said, while the crude oil adjustment figure fell by 1.16 million barrels per day, according to the AIA data. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Investment in clean energy will extend its lead over spending on fossil fuels in 2023, the International Energy Agency said on Thursday, with solar projects expected to outpace outlays on oil production for the first time. Annual investment in renewable energy was up by nearly a quarter since 2021 compared to a 15% rise for fossil fuels, the Paris-based energy watchdog said in its World Energy Investment Report. Around 90% of that clean energy spending comes from advanced economies in China, however, highlighting the global divide between rich and poor countries as fossil fuel investment is still double the levels needed to reach net zero emissions by mid-century. Increasing exports of U.S. liquefied natural gas LNG, through 2050 will raise domestic prices for natural gas, the Energy Information Administration, EIA, said on Wednesday. In a supplement to its annual Energy Outlook 2023, the EIA studied the impact on natural gas prices at the Henry Hub in three scenarios with varying levels of LNG exports. The EIA said in the case of lower international prices, the U.S. may export 15.3 billion cubic feet per day, BCFD, of LNG in 2050, projecting Henry Hub prices at $3.30 per million British thermal units. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The United Arab Emirates has become a key trade hub for Russian gold since Western sanctions over Ukraine cut Russia's more traditional export routes, Russian customs records show. The records, which contain details of nearly a thousand gold shipments in the year since the Ukraine war started, show the Gulf state imported 75.7 tons of Russian gold worth $4.3 billion, up from just 1.3 tons during 2021. China and Turkey were the next biggest destinations, importing about 20 tons each between February 24, 2022 and March 3, 2023. With the UAE, the three countries accounted for 99.8% of the Russian gold exports in the customs data for this period. The Democratic Republic of Congo aims to boost its stake in a cobalt and copper joint venture with Chinese firms to 70% from 32%, on concerns the deal gives away too much of Congo's resources with little benefit to the country. The plan to boost Congo's stake and have greater control in managing the Sikkimines venture, currently dominated by the Chinese firms, was detailed in a document seen by Reuters that outlined Congo's demands ahead of talks to overhaul a $6 billion infrastructure for minerals agreement. Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi, who is set to visit China, instructed his government on May 19 to move ahead with the talks after Congolese stakeholders consolidated their position on the 2008 deal. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
The United Nations is working with the African Export Import Bank to create a platform to help process transactions for Russian exports of grain and fertilizer to Africa, the top UN trade official told Reuters on Wednesday. An agreement struck in July last year requires the UN to help Russia overcome any obstacles to its grain and fertilizer exports for three years. It was reached at the same time as a deal allowing the safe Black Sea export of food and fertilizer from Ukraine following Russia's February 2022 invasion. The deals were intended to ease a global good crisis that the United Nations said was worsened by the war because both countries produce grain and fertilizer for world markets, particularly in Africa and the Middle East. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.